Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about another exciting storage service, Elastic File System or EFS for short. So here's our typical scenario. We've got a region, availability zones, we've got an EC2 instance. And now instead of creating an EBS volume or storing data in simply just S3, we can create an EFS. Um, we can use the EFS storage service to store our data. It's not located in any availability zone specifically, um, but through mount targets, we can connect our EC2 instance to EFS. And the beauty of EFS is that, well, there are lots of beautiful things about it. One is that it's a serverless kind of service, and we'll talk more about serverless services further down in the course. Basically, EFS allows you to store as much data or as little data as you need it'll automatically grow or shrink as you add files add or remove files and you only pay for the storage that you're using so however much data your files are taking up if it's one gigabyte you're paying for one gigabyte if it's 30 you're paying for 30 and so on and so on <laughs> um, also another amazing thing about EFS is that if you have another EC2 instance in a different availability zone you can simply connect it to the same EFS volume. So you basically no longer need to uh, go through the process of uh, duplicating your EBS uh, volumes and uh, copying them over into another availability zone. You can just connect all your EC2 instances to the CA same EFS and they can use it and share it. An important thing to note about EFS, however, is that it does not support Windows. You can only use it on Linux instances. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, another thing about EFS is that it has infrequent access and infrequent access tier. So if there are files that you're not using often, you can put them in the infrequent access tier and you can stay, save up to 92% on, uh, on storage costs. It's a much lower cost storage class. Um, and also, you, it is very transparent for your application. So your applications won't even notice the difference. They can access the files as before. Uh, just make sure that if they are accessing them frequently, then you put the files back inside EFS. And if you don't want the headache of moving files back and forth between the standard storage class and infrequent access tier, uh, you can use EFS Intelligent Tiering that automatically does this for you. For example, it can move files uh, after 30 days of not being accessed into the infrequent access tier. And then once a file is accessed often, intelligent tiering will move it back into standard tier. So there we go. That's what EFS is all about. It's uh, all you need to know for the exam. Just remember it's not available on Windows and you can connect multiple EC2 instances to it at the same time if that is needed. Here's a quick summary of what we discussed and I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.